Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here. In this video we're going to be looking at the latest in VP's arsenal once again, which is Dirt Showdown. This time with a sole focus on controller support. So if that doesn't interest you, stop watching here because that's all it's going to be about. Now a couple of things to say beforehand. There's a couple of controllers that won't be able to test. For an example would be steering wheels. I don't have any except for an original Xbox uh, steering wheel. But sadly, for that type of controller, I don't have the proprietary adapter to PC. So this old controller and the original Xbox controller will be out of the picture this time around. I can't test them. That said, why are we looking at the control support for this game? Dirt Showdown is a racing game and there's not really that much oomph if you play it from a keyboard. So the idea here is to test the controllers to see if all the keys work right off the bat. Is it detected automatically? Plug and play. Does vibration work or not? So the first part of the video will be just plug and play support. I plug it in, I start the game up and see if the controls work. If they don't, then we go to the second part of the video where I try and figure out how to make them work if they can work at all. So let's see the lineup that we have. I'm going to be starting out with something pretty far back. That is the PlayStation 1 controller. All right, it's an original controller, DualShock version, not the D-pad version. All right, this is, I think, DualShock 1. So it does have vibration, like the first D-pad only controller. The second one would be the PlayStation 2 controller. I'm not sure if this is original or not. That is questionable since Southeast Asia, it's hard to get a hold of original stuff for the PlayStation 2 anymore. I believe this is though, because of the weight, compared to the pirated ones that I do have, which really suck. Okay, that's DualShock 2. Now since those controllers require an adapter, I am using a cheap, no brand adapter here. It's basically USB, alright, to PlayStation 1 and 2 controllers, alright, this works for both. It's a nameless brand, this is the packaging if you must see it for whatever reason. About 20 ringgit Malaysia, which in the current currency would be about 5 US dollars. Next up is a PlayStation 3 controller. So this is DualShock 3 I believe, 6 axis. Alright, I'm going to be testing this wired and wireless. Alright, using the wired cable for charging and then wireless will be utilizing a small Bluetooth dongle that I have from VZ Tech. Alright, this is also cheap. It's pretty much just that small thing there. Just plug it in and that's it. Uh, can't remember the price right now, but never mind. And the last in the series of PlayStation controllers would be the DualShock 4, which is from the PS4 controller here. I'll be testing it wired and wireless as well. All right. For the PC side of things, the awesome Logitech Rumble Pad 2, which is only wired, I don't have the wireless version, very old school, I don't think this is even on the market anymore, the new one is F710 I think, or something like that, still it's a good benchmark for Logitech controllers, the only one I have. Next up is a wired 360 controller, okay, pretty much just USB, alright, this is one that works with pretty much most of the games that I have, it was my favorite controller until I got the PS4 controller. And lastly, would be a wireless version of the 360 controller. I will be using a Microsoft official dongle thingy here. I have no idea what the heck this is. And a wireless battery-powered controller. So let's go ahead and see what works. Alright, starting off the bat, we're going with the Logitech Rumble Pad 2. I'm starting up the game right now. Once we get into the game, what we're going to be testing is if all the buttons work right off the bat, I can drive a car, and if the vibration works or not. Now, since this is a Rumble Pad 2, so far so good. Pressing the start button seems to work, which is the 10 button here. Hitting start again. I did not feel any vibration yet. I should have. So I think I've just enabled it. Let's go ahead and press that. Okay. I've turned off the music in the game as well as in the menus because it gets kind of annoying to be honest and I believe I will get a copyright infringement claim. So let's go to Joyride. Yokohama Docks, I'm going to go with the Subaru and the K&N air filters is just fine. So now to test if the vibration works or not. I, I, I believe I have to press the mode button on. So far so good, the controller is detected right off the bat. All I did was plug it in and play the game. I have done no settings whatsoever. I can't be bothered. Acceleration works, but I am feeling no vibration. Let's, let's press that vibration button again. Okay. Oh, there we go. I think that activated the vibration. Yep. 
it does seem like the control is a bit stuck into the aiming to the right. Can I go in a straight line or not? Let's find out. Reverse. I do feel the vibrations. Oh, I'm starting to get the hang of the controller. There we go, drifting, just nice. Let's change views, beautiful. Let's look back, works just fine. Looking around, let's change views again. Look around the car. Oh, I damaged it pretty bad. That's probably why it keeps going to the <laughs> right. <laughs> so the controller works and it is vibrating right now as I play the game. All right, pretty sweet. On to the next controller. This one works right off the bat. Next up, the PlayStation 1 controller. All right, I'm just going to start the game right off the bat. So again, jumping in from the beginning. Plug and play, as I said, I've done no settings whatsoever. I'm using the adapter, as you can see here. Plug straight USB to adapter to the PlayStation 2 controller. Okay, pressing start here. Let's see if I can skip this stuff. It looks like it's detecting it right off the bat. Going to enable analog here. I don't know if I felt vibration just now or not. Let's take a look. Okay, starting it up. Okay. Looks like the normal controls are working so far. Pretty good. Let's go straight to Joyride. Yokohama Docks. Oh, for a moment there, I got stuck on the down button for some reason. Okay, Subaru, I will go with the Oakley, still not feeling any vibration yet, but it does look like the analog sticks work, and considering this controller I believe is already 10 years old, the fact that it's still working is a miracle. Skip, okay, I'm gonna get a normal view, alright, acceleration, oh, oh my god, there's vibration. Oh my god, it's vibrating. That's awesome. And I'm using R2 to accelerate. L2 to brake. Circle to drift. Let's change angles. The L1 works just fine. Looking back with triangle. Oh my goodness, it works. And the vibration works. I didn't install any drivers or anything. I just plugged this in. This is a freaking miracle. I'll tell you what, this adapter doesn't work with vibration on Windows. That is a guarantee. I've tried so many times. Alright, so next controller let's go next up is the PlayStation 2 controller so I'm just going to start the game right off the bat I am going to click the analog button there so that it's lighting up so that we'll use the analog controller all right let's hit enter hey enter I mean start <laughs> haven't used these controllers in a while okay press start no vibrations yet then again I'm not sure if this is an original controller or not so only time will tell once we're in the game and racing we'll see if there is any sort of vibration so I'm just gonna go joyride again Yokohama Docks just fine with me Subaru I will go with a Hoonigan this time around so at least it's so far detecting the analog sticks and the d-pad X works just fine I believe you'll be using the same controller layout just now where R2 is accelerating L2 is is break skip Okay. Oh my goodness! It works! I can feel the vibration. There is something a bit off about the... Oh, there we go. Let's accelerate some more. Oh, yep, there's definitely vibrations. Let me see. Drift. Alright, let's actually crash into something to really feel it. Oh, yep, there it is. The whole thing just shaked. This is amazing. Look at that. Alright, let's change angles up close. Alright, let's view the back just fine. Break. Oh my goodness, it works. It works beautifully. All right, on to the next controller then. Next up is the PlayStation 3 controller. So as you can see here, this is the wired test. Let's go ahead and start up the game right off the bat. So even though it's wired, only once I start up the game does the light go to one. Otherwise, it just keeps beeping the whole time. Oh, no, no, there it goes again, beeping all the time. Okay, pressing start. Does this work? It's a good question. Doesn't seem to be detecting it. Starting up. Oh, there we go. Looks like it does work. Just took a moment there to recognize. Okay. Starting up. Moving in. So far, the controls are okay. And it's finally settled on one there. Let's go for joy. Oh, there it is. I felt the vibration just now from the words dropping. Yep, I feel them again. Alright, Subaru once again. Let's go. Oh, nope, this controller seems to be stuck for a moment. Let's go with Spy. So it looks like using a wire. Wired connection is okay with the PS3 controller. 
I guess the real test will be after this when we do wireless. Let's skip this. Oh, let's aim correctly. Acceleration is R2. Alright, looks like I can drift and I do feel the the vibrations pretty well. Let's change angles of view here. Alright, let's look back behind us. Looks just fine. Let's boost a bit. Let's change angles first. Oops, that's a YouTube one. I don't want to do that. Let's go like that. Let's boost. Yep, boost works just fine. Alright, pretty sweet. The whole controller works and the whole drift just now is like zzzz the whole time. Pretty sweet. Next, next, let's do the wireless test. Alright, so next up is the wireless. I have a Bluetooth adapter connected right here. And let's start seeking. Now if I go to Ubuntu here up top, I see the Bluetooth device is on. Let me just make sure that I'm visible just in case that matters. Let's set up a new device. And it does not seem like I can see the device here. See if it would work right off the bat without any sort of changes. I should see the device in the list, but it's not seeing it. I did a bit of Googling and it looks like I do have to install a PPA for this. So sadly, this does not work as plug and play. Not to mean that it doesn't work at all, but just that plug and play is not right off the bat. So on to the next controller. All right, so this is the PlayStation 4 controller wired test. Let's start up the game right off the bat. Wired is through USB port here. So there's a couple of things that's unique about this controller and the first is that it has its own speakers and then the second is that it has a touchpad. Looks like the X button does work right off the bat. Can see any vibration yet? Oh yep, vibration is right off the bat. It's the first thing I felt when the Dirt Showdown thing crashed on the ground. So let's jump into a game right off the bat and see how it works. Oh yep, definitely works. The vibration is really strong too which is pretty awesome. Okay. Next, Subaru. Sometimes the controls get a bit stuck, so you have to loosen them up for the software side knows what it's doing. Meaning you might have to press all the buttons at once to unlock any ones that might have been stuck. So far it's a good skip. Let's race. I can feel the vibrations. Let's change angle up close. View behind me. Drift. Yep. Let's play some boost. Change angles again. Let's boost. Oh, crap, Eddie's. Let's crash. Get some. Oh, yep, there it is. Works just nice. All right, so the wired version works. All right, so now we're going to be testing it wirelessly. Right now it's off. There is a Bluetooth adapter connected inside. My Bluetooth is on. Visible is on. Let me just go to set up new device. Now I'm going to turn this guy on, but it has to be turned on into pairing mode, which means that you have to press the PlayStation button and the share button at the same time. So give it a couple of seconds and it should start blinking pretty fast. All right, so that blinking pretty fast means that it's now being detected. Let's see, the Bluetooth devices does see things here. Now I've already previously set a connection to this. Does it work right off the bat? Oh, it does, pretty sweet. So it already re remembers the device from last time. Now if you're trying to uh, connect it for the first time through Bluetooth, Go to pin options and make sure that you select 0000. Nothing else will work. If you don't do that, you won't be able to connect to the device securely. It'll always give you some sort of uh, error. So let me go ahead and close this. Let's start the game. I am connected wirelessly right now. All right, let's see if it works in game or not. So this is much better than the PS3 controller already. Let's skip this. Can I skip this? Oh, it looks like it's working. It looks like it's working. It's completely wireless. Press start. Oh, vibrations as well. Looks like we're good. Looks like it's pretty much just plug and play with this controller. Compared to the PS3, I'd highly recommend this one. This one has a lot more features as well. Oh, yep. It works just right. I can feel the vibrations really strongly. Amazing. Okay, Subaru. Uh, the Nixon seems good. Let's see. Yep, Nixon. Sony. Wirelessly connected right now. I didn't install any drivers or anything, it's just working. This is much better than the PS3 controller so far. Skip this, let's see if I can control the vehicle. Oh, yep, it's working and I can feel the vibrations inside. It's working, let's drift. Change angle of viewing, works just fine. Let's look behind, yep. Let's look all around the vehicle. Yep, it works perfectly. Crash into something, yep, I can feel it. I can feel the vibrations working just right. So the PS4 controller works wirelessly, plug and play, just like that. Nothing set up. Next controller. 
All right, so I'm using a 3C controller next. Now this is a wired version. It is an original controller. All right, so it's just plugged in through USB port. Setting the game right up. It's just a standard 360 controller. Let's see right off the bat. Looks like it is detected right off the bat. No drivers, nothing special done. I just plug and play, just as a reminder. Nothing special is being done yet. Oh, right off the bat, I already felt some form of vibration, which is pretty awesome. Start the game right off the bat and get into some joyride. And so the sign in. Go straight to, yep, yep. Even as the words come down just now, I can feel the controller vibrating. Yep, still vibrating. Pretty good. It's pretty impressive right now that this works so well. Let's go with the Hoon again. Run into the game. All right, right off the bat, starting up, I can already feel a bit of con of the uh, vibrations. Why is it that it always seems to start off peculiarly with the camera angle? Okay, I can feel every time it boosts slightly, I can feel the vibrations happen. The drifting works as well. Let's change camera angles. Whew, this feels really good. Uh, what about the back view? I can see the back view. Whoa, okay, okay, I almost hit that. Oh, crazy face. Yep, looks like this works perfectly. I can feel all the crashes, all the turning. Looks like it detects everything. It's pretty impressive. What about the boost? Yep, even the boost works. Alright, so now the last test is the Xbox 360 wireless controller. So I have my dongle here. I'm going to start the controller up. Now I can't really tell if this is connected or not, so I'm just going to start the game up and see if this works. Because there's no interface in Ubuntu that can really check for this sort of thing. Because this isn't Bluetooth, this is some proprietary Microsoft standard as far as I know. Let's see, is it? Looks like it's already detected. Usually, if you've ever played a 360 controller before, you'll know that it'll go to point 0.1 like on the wire just now to let you know that it's connected. Apparently this is already connected wirelessly. As you can see, no cables whatsoever. Completely wireless. But all I did was switch it on, plug that in, and it's immediately detected. From Ubuntu 14.04 upwards, I believe there is a new Xbox 360 driver which is included by default. I'm not sure about other distributions and which have them, which don't. But if you're on 14.04 or newer, you should have them. So I can already feel the vibrations just now, but it doesn't feel as strong as the wired controller. Still, let's, once I get in, we'll see if it's responsive or not. So far, every controller has been responsive, whether wired or wireless, except for the PS3, which was an issue. Okay, yeah, I definitely don't feel the vibrations as much. Let's, let's try and turn. Yeah, the vibrations aren't as strong as if it was wired. I'm not sure if that's due to the wireless uh, commands not getting through or what. It's there, it's definitely there, but it's a bit peculiar. There we go, I feel something there with that hard drift. What if I crash into something? Oh yep, there we go, feel it. It's not as strong as the wired one, but it's definitely there. It's pretty neat. So there we have it, that was pretty much just plug and play. Alright, so we've come to the end of this and it's pretty amazing what virtual programming have done with Dirt Showdown. Out of all the controllers, the only controller that the use case didn't work wirelessly was the PS3 six axis, six -axis controller, which was pretty depressing. I tried using QT6A, the PPA, or 6, 6 ag I can't remember what it's called. Regardless of what I did, this guy would not pair with my Bluetooth dongle. Now, it could be that my Bluetooth dongle is not that good, or maybe it just doesn't sit well with this guy. But it does work with the PS4 controller, so maybe there's something else going on here. But out of all the controllers that I used, only that didn't work and only in the wireless setting, which is pretty darn good. So with all that said, VP have done an amazing job on this game. It is extremely playable and I would even wager to say that if you're going to play the game, you'd be better to play on Ubuntu than you would be to play it on Windows. All things factored in, from the game performance, the way it starts up, shuts down very fast, the controller support, it's all there on Ubuntu. I would like to say the same for all other Linux, Linux distros, but I'm not sure about their driver status yet, so I'm not sure if the controller schemes that you see here would work or not. But if they have the latest drivers, or even newer than what Ubuntu has, then you should be in fine hands. So I hope this video was useful or educational to you in one way or another, and I apologize if there's any mistakes. In the comments, leave your constructive criticism, or whatever else it is you want to say, and thank you for watching.